Okay, in the next two videos, we're going to look at Pascal's triangle and the binomial theorem. Both of them do the exact same thing. Both of them will allow you to get something like x plus y to the power of 4 and just write out the answer, rather than actually multiplying it out. When we, when, once we've studied Pascal's triangle and binomial theorem, I'll be able to give you x plus y to the power of 10 and you'll be able to just tell me what the answer is. Now, as far as I'm concerned, Pascal's triangle is far easier. I always would do this first and if you understand this, you'll be able to do the binomial theorem. But essentially, before, before we delve too deeply into how to do this, we need to come up with Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle is basically just a triangle of numbers. And the first row is simply the number 1. The second row is going to have two numbers in it, and there's a, the first number is a 1, and the last number is a 1. On every row, the first number is a 1, and the last number is a 1. The first row is one number, the second row is two numbers, the third row is three numbers, the fourth row has four numbers, and so on. So the first, in the third row, there's three numbers. The first one is a 1, and the last one is a 1. To work out what this one should be, I add up the two numbers above it. 1 plus 1 gives me 2. So the third row in Pascal's triangle is 1, 2, 1. The fourth row is going to have four numbers. The first one will be a 1, and the last one will be a 1. And then there's two more numbers in the middle, which I, use, I add up the numbers above it to figure it out. 1 plus 2 will give me 3. 2 plus 1 also gives me 3. If I continue on, the fifth row is going to have five numbers. The first one will be a 1, and the last one will be a 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. 3 plus 3 is 6. And then 3 plus 1 gives me 4. You could continue this on. Actually, what it's worth our while doing now, you might pause the video. I want you to write out the next two rows in your Pascal's triangle. So I've listed out the second two rows here, and hopefully you're comfortable enough with that. Obviously, we could continue this one on indefinitely, but you just need to be able to, to write out your first few rows in the Pascal's triangle. Now, let's consider how we can actually, how we can use this in order to work out the likes of x plus y to the power of 3, or x plus y to the power of 4, or 10, or 20, or whatever it is. Okay, let's just start with an easy one, like x plus y to the power of 3. You, can, you should be able to do this in your head, x plus y to the power of 3. If something is to, if you've brackets like this, two terms in brackets to the power of 3, that means there's four terms. If you have two terms in brackets to the power of 2, that means there's three terms. If I had x plus y to the power of 5, I know that there would be six terms if I multiplied that out. Basically, you just add one and that's the number of terms. So if I asked you to expand x plus y to the power of 3, you should know that the first term will be this to the power of 3. So the first one will be x to the power of 3. The second term will be this to the power of 2. It'll be x to the power of 2. The third term will be this, the first thing in the bracket to the power of 1. So that's x to the power of 1. While the fourth term will be x to the power of 0. So look at just what happens to x. It's x cubed, x squared, x, and then there's no x's at all. And then what happens to the second one is the opposite of that. The last term is y cubed, then y squared, then y to the power of 1, then y to the power of 0. So that's the way we always work out where, what the x's and y's should be. And that's where Pascal's triangle comes into play. The Pascal's triangle tells me what the coefficients, the numbers at the start of each term will have to be. In this case, if you look at the fourth line in Pascal's triangle, it's 1, 3, 3, 1. And the reason I know I'm using this line is because there's four numbers in this line and there's four terms in this line. So if you were expanding x plus y to the power of 3, you should write it as x cubed, x squared, x, no x, and then y cubed, y squared, y, and no y. And then you look at this line in your Pascal's triangle and you realize that in fact it's just 1, 3, 3, 1. They're the coefficients in front of each term. You multiply this by 3, this by 3, and you leave a 1 and a 1 there. So let's just look at another one. Let's just look at how we would, in our heads, expand x plus y to the power of 4. If it's to the power of 4, that means there needs to be 5 terms. So if I was expanding this, I know that the first one will be x to the power of 4. The next term will be x to the power of 3, then x to the power of 2, then x to the power of 1, and then there'll be no x at all in the last term. Now I need to go backwards. 
I know that the last term here will be whatever is the second thing in the bracket to the power of 4. So I know that the last term will be y to the power of 4, this will be a y to the power of 3, this will be a y to the power of 2, y to the power of 1, and then no y's at all. So you can more or less just do that in your head. But from here, we need to figure out what the coefficients should be. So I need to continue on my Pascal's triangle. If this is to the power of 4, there's clearly 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms, which means I need to get the, to the fifth line in my Pascal's triangle. Put a 1 at the start and a 1 at the end. 1 and 3 adds up to 4. 3 and 3 adds up to 6. 3 and 1 adds up to 4. That tells me what the coefficients should be here. The first one will be a 1, the second one will be a 4, the third one will be a 6, and then 4, and then a 1. Now because there's a plus in here, then all of these will be pluses. Because there's a plus in there, then all of them will be pluses. Now let's just consider what would happen if this was a minus. Imagine if it was x minus y. If it's x minus y, or if it's some term minus another term, then every second term will be negative. So let's actually just compare them. If it's x plus y, then they're all just pluses. But imagine I had x minus y to the power of 4. If you had x minus y to the power of 4, well, ultimately the first term is still just going to be x to the power of 4. So the first term will be positive. But then the second term will be negative. So it would be minus 4yx cubed. If the second term is negative, that means the third term is positive. It would be plus 6y squared x squared. If that one's positive, the next one will be negative. It's minus 4y cubed x. And if that one's negative, the next one will be positive. It would be plus y to the power of 4. So that's all the theory. To be honest, that's all the theory that you need in your Pascal's triangle. Now what I'm going to do is give you a number of questions to try. Obviously your life can be made a lot harder here. But I want you to just, if you're not 100% on that, just watch this little segment again and then try the questions I'm going to give you. Okay, in order to practice Pascal's triangle, I want you to try these four questions. So in this case, I'm saying use Pascal's triangle to expand the following. I'm not giving you the option of multiplying it out, so I'm not giving you the option of using the binomial theorem. You have to use Pascal's triangle to do it. So in the first one, I want you to expand x plus y to the power of 6, x minus y to the power of 6, 2x plus 3y to the power of 4, and 5x minus 8y to the power of 4. Obviously, the last, the second two, 3 and 4, are going to be significantly harder. I want you to see how, how are you going to deal with this. Just follow the same logic as I, in my examples as in, uh, and as in these two and see if you can work it out. So I want you to pause the video now and work through these and then watch my solutions on it. Okay, so I've worked through the first one here. We had x plus y to the power of 6. If we have x plus y to the power of 6, that means there's going to be 7 terms in our expansion. And that means we need to write out the first 7 lines of our Pascal's triangle, which brings us to 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. To work this one out, I know the first term will have to be x to the power of 6. Then x to the power of 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the last term won't have an x at all. And then I go backwards, the last term is y to the power of 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then there's no y here at all. Once you've identified your x's and your y's, you just literally write out these numbers or your coefficients, 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1. And since there was a plus between the two terms, that means that they're all pluses. So that's all you need to do for part 1. Part 2 is basically the exact same, except instead of a plus, we had a minus. So the first term, it'll be x to the power of 6, that's a plus, the next one's minus, then plus, then minus, then plus, then minus, then plus. So you, you follow the exact same logic, it's just when you're assigning the signs, you do it slightly differently. But let's move on now and look at the harder ones, part 3 and part 4. Okay, the third one here was significantly harder, but we just follow the exact same logic as previous ones. We have 2x plus 3y to the power of 4. If it's to the power of 4, in our expansion, we're going to have 5 terms which means that the fifth line in Pascal's triangle, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, is what's going to be relevant. The first term will be the first thing in the brackets to the power of 4. So it's 2x to the power of 4, and then the next one had a 3, and 2x to the power of 2, 2x to the power of 1, and then there was none in the last one. Whereas the last term will be this term to the power of 4. So 3y to the power of 4, 3y to the power of 3, to the power of 2, to the power of 1, and then there's none of them. 
The only other thing we need to slot in then is the 14641. So you'll notice here I put in my coefficients 1, 4, 6, 4 and 1. And since there's a plus between them, then they're all pluses. They all just put a plus between each term. And beyond that now, I just need to simplify it. 2x to the power of 4. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. And x by itself 4 times is x to the power of 4. Here I just simplified 2x to the power of 3 becomes 8x cubed. 2x, to be, 2x by 2x is 4x squared. 3y by 3y is 9y squared. Here I just had to simplify 3y to the power of 3 becomes 27y cubed. And 3y to the power of 4 becomes 81y to the power of 4. All I did then was multiply the coefficients. This term can stay the same. 4 by 8 by 3 gives me 96x cubed y. 6 by 4 by 9 gives me 216x squared y squared. 4 by 2 by 27 gives me 216xy cubed. And then the last term just stays the same. Now, that's kind of, they're quite tricky ones. I think the way an exam question is likely to come up, rather than asking you to expand the whole lot, they might ask you to find the third term or find the term that has an x squared in it. So the term that has an x squared in it in this case would be that term. But even if it's to the power of four, there's only five terms altogether. I still think your life is made easier if you just find them all and then identify which term you're actually looking for. Okay, the final one I want to work on in Pascal's triangle was this one, 5x minus 8y to the power of 4. In this case, once again, it's to the power of 4, so the fifth line in Pascal's triangle, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, is what's relevant. The first term will be the first thing here to the power of 4, then it's 5x to the power of 3, 5x to the power of 2, 5x to the power of 1, and then no 5x. Then we work backwards, the last term will be 8y to the power of 4 to the power of 3, 2, 1, and then there's none in the first term. Because there's five terms in total, the coefficients will be 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1. And then we have to worry about the signs. Because this is negative, the first term will be plus, then minus, then plus, then minus, then plus. And from there, we just have to simplify it down. 5 to the power of 4 is 625. 5 to the power of 3 is 125, 5 squared is 25, and 8 squared is 64, 8 cubed is 512, and then I ran out of space, so I did it underneath, 8 to the power of 4 was 4096. So to get your final answer, in each term you multiply all the coefficients. The first term stays the same, but 4 by 125 by 8 gives me 4000, 6 by 25 by 64 gives me 9600, 4 by 5 by 512 gives me 10,240, and then the last term stays the exact same. Just, it's easy to mess up your coefficients there, so just always double check. x to the power of 4 to the power of 3, 2, 1, 0. This is y to the power of 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, so it makes sense. Now, in terms of Pascal's triangle, that's all I want to look at. The next thing we're going to look at is the binomial theorem, and I think... If you are aware, if you're comfortable using Pascal's triangle, it makes your life a lot easier when we move on to look at the binomial theorem.